The senior advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and former Israeli ambassador to the United Kingdom, Mark Regev, uh, is with us now in, in Tel Aviv. Uh, first of all, let me just ask you, I know military people, I guess, in Israel, not just the United States, have their own language. When um, the IDF says military, ground, the ground exper excursion has expanded, ground operations have expanded, uh, I didn't know they'd even begun. So what, what does this mean exactly, that the ground operation has expanded? Does it mean that Israeli troops, are, soldiers are on the ground in Gaza? So obviously I'm not going to go into anything operational, especially if such an operation is ongoing, for obvious reasons. But I can say this, we are beefing up the pressure on Hamas. Right. That pressure will increase and continue to increase until we achieve our goal. But is there a ground, I mean, ground operations have expanded. Does that mean ground operations are happening? That's what it sounds like it means. I don't, again, I don't speak military ease, whether it's in the Pentagon or the IDF, but it, what does it mean? I said a moment ago, operations are ongoing. Right, okay, I still don't know what that means. What can you tell us about this barrage of airstrikes going on in Gaza right now? I can't go into anything tactical, Right. but I can say this. Uh, we are focused on our goal, which is the elim elimination of Hamas, right. which is the destruction of its military capabilities, its military machine, yeah. and the end of its political control over the Gaza Strip. So the IDF released earlier today um, a 3D map of um, a command and control center of Hamas uh, that the IDF says is under a hospital in Gaza. It's not uh, photographs, it's a, it's a graphics, a graphic depiction. Where, where does that information come from? That information is ironclad. It's based on Israeli intelligence. But if you ask Gazans who are honest with you, they'll tell you that for years they've known that Hamas uses hospitals, and particularly in this case the Shifa hospital, but not only, for their command and control. The IDF spokesman said, and people in Gaza must have seen it, that when this war started, on the 7th of October with that terrible massacre, and they expected Israel to strike back. There was this surge of Hamas activists, Hamas terrorists, scores of them finding shelter in the Shifa hospital. Yeah. So, I mean, it, obviously it has been known and has been reported by, I mean, Anderson's been to Gaza, and it, it's known that Hamas fires rockets from civilian centers, from apartments, etc. From schools? from UN facilities? Right, that's been reported by, Correct. it's not just IDF claiming it, Correct. it's been reported by independent journalists on the ground. Does that mean that Israel considers hospitals to be legitimate targets? Because there are, actu there are also, as you will acknowledge, patients and doctors and nurses in those hospitals. So we were just pointing out the facts. We want the world to understand the enemy we're up against. A ruthless enemy that has been reported widely on CN has no trouble massacring Israeli civilians. Uh, they did so uh, in all the gruesome reality that we saw on October 7th. Right. But they also have no qualms whatsoever about uh, embedding themselves in humanitarian buildings like hospitals. Right. Which is, I think it shows us exactly who we're up against. And when this is over, and we have defeated Hamas, and we have destroyed its military machine, and we have removed it from the position of power it holds in Gaza today, I think not only are we doing Israelis a favor in freeing them from this terrorist threat to the south, but we're ultimately doing the people of Gaza a favor. We're, we're freeing them from this extremist theocratic dictatorship run by a bunch of uh, uh, cutthroat terrorists. Who takes over in, in Gaza when and if you actually defeat Hamas? Who takes over? First of all, we will defeat Hamas. Okay. We will eliminate But them. who takes over? Uh, that we have contingency plans. We're looking at different uh, uh, scenarios. We've been discussing them also with friends and allies like with Washington, but at this stage I can't go into any details. The focus at the moment is defeating Hamas. And practically anything is superior, is preferable to continued Hamas rule in Gaza because we've seen what that brings. It brings the sort of massacre that we saw in Israel on October 7th. We okay. don't want to go back there. A senior Hamas official says Hamas is, quote, ready to defeat Israeli ground troops if they enter Gaza. He went on to say, quote, the resistance, this is just me quoting yeah, them, yeah. the resistance is ready. I mean, I, I laid out what your soldiers are going to be facing in Gaza. It is, the, the challenge is this vast network of, what is it, 200 kilometers of tunnels that they've been building for 20 years, you know, very sophisticated, um, 
Uh, the defense minister said to me earlier today, the, all the money going to Gaza over the years, not to build universities, not to build factories, to build tunnels and to buy rockets. Correct. Okay. Um, a ruthless terrorist group. Correct. Willing to blow themselves up, willing to do anything, use their own people as human camouflage. An urban warfare, the toughest warfare there is. Two million civilians that you don't want to kill, right? You don't want to hurt them. Correct. You're unfortunately killing them, but you don't want to. You're making an effort not to. You're making an effort not to, but you're killing a lot of them. I mean, this is a task that it, it's seeming in, seemingly impossible, and you're sending your soldiers into it. So obviously... We're on top of a humanitarian crisis already ongoing. First of all, the entire situation we're in is precisely because Hamas attacked us and massacred us on October 7th. We are responding to Hamas. And I have no doubt that our soldiers who are going into battle are facing risks. You are 100% correct. The enemy, terrifying. The enemy is horrific in its barbarity, in its fanaticism, and its disregard for all the normal rules of war. Uh, that's clear. But we have to do this. And the young soldiers going into battle know this, that we have to do this. Why? The current status quo that we've got this terrorist ISIS-type enclave on our southern border, that is unsustainable. We will not live like that any longer. We saw what they're capable of doing. We saw the sort of gruesome, terrible, horrific violence they inflicted upon us. We refuse to live with that sort of neighbor anymore. And we are now going to create a new reality, reality in Gaza, a reality that will be hopefully more stable, more peaceful, will be better for people on both sides of the frontier.